Chapter 2 Derek couldn't sleep. He was too excited about the festival tomorrow. His brother Clap and all their family would be the guests of honor. There would be dancing and feasting, and then at night, a great bonfire in which the body of the dragon would be burned. Now, it lay on the wagon, just outside the paddock fence. Tomorrow night, its ashes would be placed in a carved urn and given to Clap. Clap would place the urn on the mantel next to his father's. One day, Derek fought to place an urn there too. Outside, in the paddock, Derek could hear the nervous rustling of the ukes. It made them uneasy to have the body of the dragon so near. Derek listened. The house was still. No one would know if he went down to comfort Noni, his favorite, and gave her a bit of sugar. He crept out in his night shirt. Here, Noni, little pet, he whispered. The small yuke ran to his side and nuzzled him gently. Derek took the sugar from his pocket and fed it to her. A rough, wet tongue tickled his hand as she licked every crumb from between his fingers. Derek stared at the great dragon. He could see it clearly in the light of Zoriak's twin moons. It lay on its side, its wings twisted and crumpled, its once fearsome claws, stubby and blunt. Derek got goosebumps, thinking about how it must have looked in life. He walked around it, imagining it standing on its powerful legs, flames shooting from its mouth. He could see it charge. He could hear it roar. He could hear it... Whimper? Derek jumped back. He was sure he had heard something. Could the creature still be alive? Derek wasn't taking any chances. He dived for cover behind a barleyberry bush and lay still, waiting. The sound came again. Hello. Hello. A soft hiccuping kind of saw. Derek peeked out. The great head lay just in front of him, still as death. He crept out of hiding and circled the creature once again. Then he saw it. A tiny head peeking out of the pouch on the giant dragon's belly. A dragonling. Derek stared in amazement. He knew dragons carried their young in pouches until they were old enough to fend for themselves, but he had never seen a live dragonling before. The small creature came out of the pouch and climbed unsteadily up its mother's chest. It was about half as big as Darek, and he guessed it to be very young, maybe even newborn. The dragonling licked its mother's still face with its forked tongue, whimpering all the while. Darek stepped back and slipped on a pebble falling to the ground. 
The dragonling twisted its neck and looked at him, its eyes shining pale green in the night. Wrong, it said, and began to climb down in his direction. Darek scrambled to his feet. Small as the creature was, it was still a dragon, and Derek had no wish to face it unarmed. He picked up a big stick. The dragonling fluttered down off the wagon and approached on wobbly legs. Rawr, it said again. Derek held the stick out like a sword. The dragonling stopped and sniffed it. It gave it a lick, then whimpered again. Darek had been taught all his life to hate and fear dragons, but it was hard to hate such a small one, and an orphan at that. He lowered his club, and the dragonling came up and nuzzled him. Darek felt in his pocket. There was a small lump of sugar left. He held it out cautiously. The little dragon sniffed it. Then the forked tongue flicked out, and it was gone. From said the dragon. It was a happy sound. The dragon nuzzled him again. I don't have any more," said Darek, holding both hands up. "See," the dragon butted him playfully. "All right, all right," said Darek. "I'll get more. Wait here." He turned and started toward the house. The dragon wobbled after him. "No," said Darek. Quickening his steps, you stay. Wrong," said the dragon. It flapped its small wings and flew a few feet to catch up. Darek stopped and stared at it, suddenly realizing what he'd done. He'd made friends with the dragon, an enemy of his people. Now. What was he supposed to do? The end of chapter two.